Hello everybody and welcome to the second video in this beautiful Soup4 tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to search for more advanced things in your HTML document. I'll also be showing you how you can modify and look at the attributes of HTML tags. And I'll show you how you can do things like use regular expressions, search for multiple tags at the same time, search for properties or attributes of a tag, all of the things that you would need to do when you're looking for something in an HTML document. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so the first thing I do need to mention here is that I did change my HTML document. So if you go here, I'm reading in my index.html. It's a document we're going to work on here. And this is what the document looks like. It is a form. So I actually have it open in my web browser. You can see this here is actually what it looks like. And well, I just want to show you that because it's different from what I had before. Again, I will upload this onto GitHub in case you want to work on this yourself, uh, but it just has some more stuff like a bunch of options, some input fields, more stuff that we can work with. Anyways, what I'm going to start by doing is just kind of recapping how we can search for things in our document. So we saw previously there was two kind of search functions. We had dot find and then we had dot find all. Now dot find gives us the first result that is matched with whatever we put in dot find and then dot find all gives us all of the results. So let's just do a quick search right now. I'm going to say result is equal to doc dot find and let's just look for all of the option tags and then print result. So when we do this, we can see, sorry, we get the first option tag because I just did dot find. But if I do dot find all, it should give me them all in a list pretty straightforward gives you the actual tag. So now let's go back to find for a sec and I'm going to show you how we can actually modify the attributes of this tag. So notice we have selected value and then we have the actual string here. So how can we change what the value is? How can we change what selected is? Well, it's actually really straightforward. So let's just call this tag. And now I guess we could print the tag after two. What you can do if you want to access or modify the attributes in the tag, so selected and value, is you can access them like a dictionary. So you, you can say tag, and in this case, value, and let's just make this equal to, uh, I don't know, new value like that. And this will actually change the value attribute for you. So if you run this now, notice it's changed to new value. Now, obviously, this works for selected as well. We can make selected and maybe make it equal to false. And then notice this is false. So pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to add attributes, what you can do is just add them like this. So I could say tag and maybe color and oops, let's make this equal to blue. So then if I make that equal to blue, if I were to save this HTML document, which I'll show you in a minute, then it would actually modify the document such that it now has the color blue uh, for this option. Actually, I don't know if this is going to work in this tag, but you get the idea. You can add an attribute very easily by doing that. Now, if you just want to see what all of the attributes are, what you can do is print out tag dot adders. So attributes, and then this will give you all of them in a dictionary. So value and selected. And well, that's how we were accessing them before anyways. So pretty straightforward. That's kind of all you need to know related to the attributes. Now let's go back to find. And I'm going to show you some more advanced things that we can do when we are using find. So when you just put in a string like this, what you're searching for is a tag name, right? We've already done that a few times. However, you can search for multiple tag names at the first time or at, this, at the same time. Sorry, not at the first time. And the way you do that is you make a list and put all of the tag names that you want to find inside of it. Now I'm going to do find all because this will make more sense for this example, but let's go find all and let's look for the P tags. Let's look for maybe the div tags and let's look for uh, what else do we want? Do we have like a LI tag? Let's see if we have any of those. OK, so now notice we get a list and it gives us all of the tags that have well P div or LI pretty straightforward. And then obviously gives us everything inside of those tags as well. So that's how you can search for tag names. Now you can also search for other things and you can search for combinations of things at the same time. For example, maybe I want to look for an option tag and maybe I want this option tag to have the text that is equal to. Let's find one right here. Undergraduate. So let's 
take this and let's put this here. Now, if I do this, notice it gives me this tag, right? So I searched for an option tag and then any tag that had undergraduate as the text for it. So you can combine these queries together. Now, what you can also do is look for specific values or look for specific attributes of these tags. So if you want to look for, say, the value attribute, then what you can do is say value is equal to. And then in this case, this would be undergraduate like that. So if we run this, it should still work. Uh, we get the value undergraduate. Now, if we change this and we remove the E, notice that obviously it's not going to give it to us because that no longer matches. So pretty straightforward. If you want to look for an attribute, just put the name of the attribute equals and then whatever it is that you're looking for. If you want to look for text, you can look for text like this. And if you want to look for multiple tag names, you can put them inside of a list. So before we continue, I do need to thank the sponsor of this video and the series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have a ton of practice questions, mock interviews, a data structures crash course, and a lot of other awesome features. Check them out today from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. Now, next, I'm going to show you how we can look for different class names. So this one is actually very useful uh, to be able to do. A lot of times you want to look for a class that is placed on some of these elements. So maybe we're looking for a button item or something like that. Now, what you would think you would do, right, would you, you would just write class equals. But the problem with this is that class is a reserved keyword in Python that is used for actually creating a class. So instead of writing class, you just do class underscore. And now you can search for the class name of specific items. So let's remove all of this and let's find all of the classes that have BTN hyphen item or all of the tags that have BTN item as one of their classes. So now you're going to see that we get this a tag. I guess we get another a tag. Regardless, you get the point. That is how you search for a class name. Now, lastly, I will show you how we can use a regular expression. So the regular expression module in Python is called RE. So if you import RE, what you can actually do now is you can look or use a regular expression for any of these things that you're searching for. So let's say we want to find some text. So let's go text is equal to and we want this text to contain a dollar sign but we actually want to get what the text is after the dollar sign as well. So the same example we had done previously, right? We wanted to find the price of an item. And what we did is we found the dollar sign and then we had to do a bit of work and find the parent tag. And then we looked for another tag inside of that. And then we found the text inside of that tag. And well, that was a lot of work. And the reason we had to do that is because we could only find just the dollar sign. We didn't know what the price was going to be. Whereas here we can use a regular expression that will actually give us all of the text that is beside to the left or right of a dollar sign. So if you look here, notice I have two things that have dollar signs. So two, three, four, five, one, two, three. I just threw them in the document here. And now what I can do is look for text and I can say re dot compile. This is how you write a regular expression. You put it inside of dot compile. And I won't really necessarily go through the syntax here, but if we want to look for anything after the dollar sign and including a dollar sign, we have to use the escape character dollar sign dot and then a uh, asterisks like this. So this means we are matching the dollar sign and then any character, any number of times coming after the dollar sign. And the reason I have to use an escape character here and why it's highlighting is because dollar sign is part of a regular expression syntax. And so it won't actually let me like look for it if I just put a dollar sign. Anyways, I won't go through the syntax necessarily. You can look that up on your own. Uh, but if I run this now, notice I'm going to get these two prices. So if I wanted to get them nicer, then what I could do is say, um, hmm. I don't want to do anything too advanced to do this. Let's just do a for loop for tag in tags. And then I can print tag dot strip. And this should remove all of these white spaces for me. Uh, let's see if that does it. And there you go. Now I actually get what the prices are. So that's pretty easy. You can use a regular expression. So finally, the last thing I will show you here is how you can actually limit the number of results that you get when you are doing a search. So in this case, when we have find all, maybe we only want to find the first five or the first seven or the first n results, right? If that's the case, then what we can do is add another keyword here called limit and limit can be equal to. And then in this case, I can just do like limit equals one. And now it's only going to give me one result. So if you want to limit the number of results, you can use limit pretty straightforward. All right. So now that I've showed you how to search through the document in multiple ways, I'm going to show you how we can actually save the modifications we make to the document. 
this is pretty simple but first I actually want to make some changes to the document so what I'm going to do is look through my document and I'm going to find all of the input tags that have type equal to text now those tags would be uh, actually let me just open up this file here uh, those tags would be email I guess actually not email probably full name and maybe email uh, anyways I think there's a few tags that have some text as their type regardless I am going to change their placeholder just to say something else so let's do that we're gonna say for tag in tags and I'm gonna say tag at placeholder is equal to I changed you exclamation point perfect now what I want to do is actually save these changes so I've modified the attributes of these tags now I want to change that so to do that I'm going to say with open I'm going to open a new HTML file I'll call this uh, actually changed dot HTML I'm going to open this in write mode because I'm creating this file so when you open it in W mode it actually will override or create a new file if this file doesn't already exist I'm going to call this as file and then what I'm going to do is say file dot write and I'm going to write the string of my document so when you take the string of your document it just gives you all of the HTML so let's just go ahead and write that into the file and that's literally all we need to do we'll just be writing HTML into our HTML document so let's save this let's run it uh, we got some issue here oh oops I didn't put these inside of open I'm sure you guys were wondering what I was doing there okay so let's fix that now let's run it it's created a new file for me when I open this file notice it says I changed you I changed you and I changed you so I guess those ones that had the text type so yeah with that said that is really all I need to show you in this video in the next video I'm going to show you more of how we can kind of traverse the tree and look at neighbors of tags and look at parents and descendants and similar to what we did in the first video but just in a more in-depth way uh, anyways i hope you guys enjoyed if you did make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and i will see you in another one Thank you.